Gideon. So I hope you're ready for this story. But before we begin, let us jump into worship. Give it everything that you've got. Let's go. lesson. So I'll just go through the things that you need for this particular craft. So you're going to need two pieces of A4 paper. You're going to need something to make a stick with. So you could go into the garden and grab a large stick. You could do what I've done where I got some old cardboard from something that was going to be recycled and I've just rolled it and made it into a large stick like this. Um, you're also going to need some colouring pencils, so I've already selected what colours I need for this craft. You're going to need, of course, a pencil and a rubber. And you might want to have some felt tips ready if you want. I've also got a ruler and a pair of scissors, okay? So remember if you're using scissors, to always ask for help when using them, okay? So, with that, let us begin with our craft. Okay, so for the first part of this craft, you're going to need a ruler and a pencil. Keep a rubber handy as well in case you need that. So first of all, grab your ruler and what you need to do is put it onto the bottom of your paper. Um, you don't want it all the way at the bottom, make sure that you've got a little bit of a gap from the bottom and your line. So you're going to count six spaces from each Edge. So six centimeters from this side and six centimeters from this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Put a dot. And then do the same on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Put another dot. And then all you're going to do is join the dots. And that's the base of our jar ready. Now what you need to do is decide whereabouts you want your jar to come up to on your paper. So this is going to be a tall jar, so you want it fairly near the top. So I'm gonna go about, about here, and you're gonna do one centimeter dot from either side. And you want it as straight as you can get it, so one centimeter, put a dot, one centimeter, put another dot. And then all you're gonna do is join the edge of this line to your dot. So now what you need to do is draw the neck of the jar. So what you're going to do is draw a curve, almost like a shoulder going up into a neck and out like that. And then do the same on the other side. And you can adjust as you're going along so that they match up. Now you're going to do the hole at the top of the jar. So we're going to go like that, do a little bit of a curve, and then do another curve at the top. And you could make it bigger if you wanted, like that or smaller, because this is all going to be filled in, okay? So you don't even need to rub out that, that line. And there we have the shape, all ready to go. Um, now what you need to do as well is add on the arm or the handle, so just do some loops like so. And you might want to add a bit more of a shape, so you could add a little shape like that to give it a bit more of a design if you wanted. And that is basically the shape that we're going to be colouring in today. So your jar should look something like this, so now you just need to colour it in. So I'm going to do a darker shade on the handles. And now I'm going to colour in the rest with a lighter shade. My jar so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take another darker color and I'm going to just go around the edges 
and do a little bit of a line going like this not too far in you want it to kind of look a little bit um, like it's different sized all the way around and this will just make it look like the jar is a little bit cu curved so now you've got your jar okay so now you can add some nice little designs to it if you want to so i'm just going to use my pencil for this bit to start off with so all I'm going to do is like some little waves almost. So I'm just going to go like that really random little pattern, but it just looks really nice. And then I'm going to go over it in a bit with some uh, felt tip. my little design you might want to add more design to it as well if you want to um, now what we're going to do is we're going to write something in the middle of our jar so the verse that we're going to write in the middle here is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and it's verse 9 so what we're going to write is my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness so we're going to write that in the middle of the jar just here so you might want to write with big um, big letters. This version that I have written is also from the NIV version, but you might want to write the one that is from the Good News Bible, which is a little bit different. That one reads, my grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. So that one is a little bit easier for you to write. So it's up to you which one you do. So I've done the NIV one. And now I'm just gonna outline that using a felt tip pen. going to outline my jar a little bit as well just to make it stand out a bit more the design for the jar. So all you need to do now is colour this bit in black. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the jar shape. So you might want to get some help for this part. So now I've cut out my shape, I'm just going to turn it over. And because I've used a felt tip or a sharpie, I can now see where the previous lines were. So I'm just going to fill in these gaps. left to do now is to colour exactly the same as you did on the other side with some pencils so I'm going to do that but now I'll put it on this side okay so I've now coloured both sides so now with this second side we're actually going to do something a little bit different so you're going to need your pencil again 
And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna make this look like it's cracked, okay? So what you need to do is start from the top and kind of go down like that. And then you wanna go down like that on this side. And then we're gonna go in and it doesn't need to be neat because remember this is a crack. So it's not going to be a perfect crack. So you can make it look as fun and different as you want. <laughs> going to do is we're going to make a little crack as well here on this side so you want to do this bit quite thin going up like that and then do like a triangle shape like this do another one going that way I'm going to do another one it's a bit like a star but then you're going to also add some more bits to make it not look like a star, like that, okay? And then you can add on some little bits that are gonna come off, like that. And then I'm gonna do one going up the top as well. Now it is time for you to fill this part in. So I'm not gonna use a felt tip this time because I don't want to ruin it. Um, so now you could use your pencil or find a black crayon and color in the crack. I filled in the crack, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a dark color brown and I'm just gonna go around some of the edges using this. Just to kind of blend it in a little bit with the jar design. And there we go. So that is the cracked side of our jar done. So now if you flip it over, you can see we've got our Bible verse. And then if we turn it over, we've got a cracked jar. Have a think about what story, um, what part of Gideon's story this jar is um, to do with. So now we've done this, it's time to move on to the next part of the craft. So for this next part, you're gonna need your pencil again because we're going to draw the shape of a flame, okay? So I'm gonna go up like that, and then I'm gonna go down like that okay um, and then I'm actually also going to draw another one or I'm going to draw another one but I'm not going to draw it um, directly next to it I'm going to leave a little gap but using it as a guide so I'm going to go up like that round do a little bit up here and then like that and now what you need to do is colour these in. flames now you need to cut these two shapes out so you might want to get some help for this part as well so I now have my flames all cut out and ready to go for where we're gonna stick them so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stick the flames together um, I'm just going to use a bit of tape for this but you could use glue as well glue would work 
probably even a little bit better. I don't need too much sellotape. And I'm just gonna stick this onto the very edge of the flame. Okay, now what you need to do is just roll your flame a little bit. So I've rolled mine up a little bit. And I've got my stick that's ready to go. So if you've got um, a normal stick, then you'll just need to attach this around the edge of it. So go around and stick it with some sellotape or whatever you've got at home. Um, but if you've got a cardboard tube like me, then you could just slide it inside the tube like so. And now we have a flame on the end of our stick. Um, so now it is time to explain what this craft can be used for. So what you need to do now is listen out in our story to where you could use this craft. So you've got your jar and the torch, which can go in the jar, and then you need to remove it, and when you turn it over, that is when the jar has broken. So listen out very carefully to our story to when this craft could be useful. And that is everything for today's craft. I hope that you enjoy the story. Let's head over to Tim right now. Hello children, great to be with you again. Hope you'll listen carefully to the story. Um, it's a time when the Israelites were living in the promised land, but there were enemies around them, all around them, and there was one tribe, the Midianites, and they were mean. And they invaded the land where the Israelites were living. And they took away all their crops and animals and they were very harsh and they were very hard on Israel. The Israelites had very little harvest. They were hungry and they were hiding away in caves in the hills, scared and shaking, full of fear and frightened. It was their own fault. God had brought them out of slavery into this land. He had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. He had said to them, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the people who live here. But they had not listened. They had disobeyed. They had done evil in God's eyes and he wasn't pleased with them. But now Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Help God! Help us please! Help! They cried. Can you all shout out that as well? So, so... God sent his messenger, an angel, who went and sat under a tree and near to a man who was hiding away from the Midianites. Gideon was his name. He said to Gideon, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon must have looked behind him. Who was he talking to? Can't be me. And he thought the messenger couldn't have been talking to him, as he certainly was not a mighty warrior. Then Gideon replied, Then why has all this happened to us if God is with us? Where are all the wonderful things that our fathers told us about, that God did when he, when he got us out of Egypt? Now he's abandoned us. That's why I've come to you. You're going to save Israel. Go and do it. I am sending you. Gideon was surprised. Me? Why are you asking me? My clan is the weakest of the tribe and I'm the youngest in my family. Little old me, I can't do it. The Lord said to him, you can't on your own, but I will be with you and you will get rid of all the mean Midianites. Well, you better give me a sign to show me that it really is you, if I'm going to do all this. And God gave him some signs and showed him that he was with him in several adventures. And you can look in your Bibles and find them in Judges chapter 6. Then came the day of the biggest test of all. God called all the fighting men uh, of all the nearby tribes uh, together to fight with him. There were 32,000 soldiers in total. But God said to him, there's far too many soldiers for me to deliver 
the Midianites into, into their hands. Now in a battle, you, you'd think they, went, they wanted as many soldiers as possible. But God said, so that Israel won't boast that her soldiers had saved her. Tell the people, anyone who's scared, they can go home. And you know, 22,000 people went home. They didn't want to go into battle and die. And it left 10,000 people. But God said again to Gideon, there's still too many soldiers. Take them to the water to drink. If they go down on their knees to drink from the river, send them home. If they scoop up the water in their hands, they can be on our team. In the end, there were only 300 soldiers left. God said to Gideon, Now we're ready to fight the Gideonites, the Midianites. Gideon was a bit puzzled, a bit worried. But we're so few, and there's so many, we don't stand the chance. I know, said Gideon. Not on your own, you don't. Not without my not without my help. Now, listen, I have a plan. So that night, Gideon led his men up into the hills, closely surrounding the Midianite camp where all their soldiers were set down for the night. Every, uh, every soldier with Gideon had a trumpet and an earthen pot with a burning torch inside. And I think you've been making those in the craft, haven't you? When Gideon gave the signal, the soldiers all blew their trumpets smash the pots don't do this at home don't break any pots or we'll be in trouble i'll be in trouble and shone their flaming bright torches they all shouted for the lord and for gideon let's shout that together we can all shout it loud as we can for the lord and for gideon Inside the camp, the Midianites woke up. They were startled and scared. The loud trumpets, the shouting, and the lights surrounded them. And they panicked. They were half asleep. They stumbled around in the dark, pushing and bumping into each other, falling over. Tables and chairs went flying, tents collapsing around them, and they ended up fighting each other as well. Wow. Later, when calm finally arrived, to the camp. Again, the Midianites who were left ran away, thinking that they had been beaten by a big army. But in reality, it was only weak little Gideon, the leader of 300 brave men and their almighty God who was with them. children today we're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 starting at verse 9 but his answer was my grace is all you need for my power is greatest when you are weak I am most happy then to be proud of my weakness in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me this is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses in insults in hardships in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hello children. I'm going to lead you in a prayer now. So get yourself ready to pray. Close your eyes and keep your hands still. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you that when I listen to you and do as you ask me, you make me brave and I can face my difficulties. Gideon shows us in, your, in the Bible how he trusted you, Lord, so he could defeat the Midianites. Gideon said he wasn't brave enough, but you, Lord, said he, you would be with Gideon. Help us to listen to you, Father, and with you we will be strong. 
because you say all things are possible with God. That is in Matthew 19 verse 26. In your name Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. So that brings us to the end of our lesson. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and got something very special from it. So before I go, just a quick reminder for you to ask your parents or guardians to post your craft or other things that you're doing at home onto Instagram, Facebook or even dropping me an email. We love to see what you are getting up to at home. So with that, it's time for me to say goodbye. But we shall catch you in another video next time. Okay, goodbye and God bless.